Hi there, I'm Barbara Bird, and today I'm coming to you from my home office, my rather chilly home office, and um, I'm going to try to combine some speaking video with some video clips that I took at the shop yesterday. So uh, I hope it works out, and you will see me reading some of my text because I've actually taken the time to kind of write it out so that I can deliver smoothly and not go all over the place. But before we get started, I'm sure that there's going to be some curiosity about the poster on the wall behind me. So I'm just going to show that to you so you know that, yes, it's Xena, the warrior princess, uh, one of my strong, powerful female role models. Okay, there you go. Hi, Xena. All right. So today we're going to talk about the groomer's touch. Here we go. Part of being a successful groomer is being able to adjust your physical attitude and even your touch to fit the individual needs of the dogs on your table. Sometimes you need to be firm and no nonsense with dogs that might be bossy, especially terriers. Other times, a dog requires a gentle, reassuring touch. Puppies may require some of both of these. And at all times, we want to handle dogs in our care with kindness. In this video, I use what I call my calming touch. It's a rather holistic concept, so I thought it would be appropriate here. This, the dog is Mr. Bear, a very touchy, reactive, older dog who has many issues with grooming. I've been grooming Mr. Bear for about 12 years, and we have things worked out. I'm not going to show you what he might do because I have an agreement, a promise with him that I won't push his buttons. Some of his buttons include no direct frontal approach, no arms reaching for him. I keep him in a lower ground floor kennel at all times with his leash attached. I don't take his collar and leash off until I do the very last little bit of the trimming and he's on my table and uh, we're almost done. No jerky movements and absolutely no lifting from the floor. He would go berserko. Yes, I have allowed this dog to teach me how to handle him. And because I am well-trained, Mr. Bear trusts me and we get through the grooming every six weeks fairly gracefully. <coughs> That's my dog, Bell, barking at nothing. Here is how I go about lifting Mr. Bear. Okay, it's running. easy, wasn't it? Now, next, we're going to show you a little snippet of the drying process. This is more of my calming touch in action. You may notice that I don't talk while I'm drying this dog. There's enough going on, and Mr. Bear does not sort through sensations very well, so I don't add my voice to the mix of what he's experiencing. I rely on my touch. Everything is done in a loving, gentle way, even when I hold his ears and face and when I lift his leg to dry the chest. I allow him to sit down because he's very arthritic and stiff and has huge issues about his right hip and his rear legs. Here's what it looks like.
of seems a little bit kind of like, don't we all do that? But I can assure you that we don't all do that. We don't all accommodate our physical demeanor and our touch to suit the nature uh, of the dog. And that's what I'm suggesting that we do. Maybe you have a couple of questions. One might be, do I ever talk to this dog? Well, of course I do. During the brush out and trimming when he's on my table, I give verbal reassurance and guidance, verbal cues to guide his behavior. My voice is another tool that I use. And hey, that's another video. We'll get to that shortly. Why did I not train Mr. Bear to let me lift him? Well, I actually have trained him in many things. I've trained him to know what to expect during all phases of his grooming. The dog comes eagerly into the salon. He's not frightened. He's not paranoid. Um, he's not mean. He's, he's nothing. He's the... I just did not attempt to train him to allow me to pick him up because he not only bites when he gets insecure, he goes into what I can best describe as a psycho mode, his zone where he no longer processes the event in a normal way. It's very difficult to you have to go through a whole calming him down and start all over again. And it's just a vicious cycle that doesn't ever allow me to uh, get out of the mode. And he just deteriorates rapidly and everything sets him off if I try to um, go over his boundaries like that. So I didn't feel up to dealing with that. And instead, I let him show me what would work for him. And it's it works out. The most important point I'd like you to get from this lesson is that we don't always have to change a difficult dog. Sometimes we can change how we handle them, how we touch them, how we physically are with them, uh, and their behavior will adjust. The calming touch technique works well on reactive and insecure dogs, and it works very well on cats. So give it a try. See you next time. Bye.